This video is sponsored by Trailer Training UK. I am in a little bit of a situation. Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Luke, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you're all alright. As you can see, we're just getting loaded now. Um, we are going to a place called Marchwood, um, which is not far away from where I am now, but there's no bridge to get there, so you've got to sort of go around a long way. We're going into a military base, uh, Sea Cadets or something like that. Uh, I went there yesterday, and um, basically uh, the bags that are going on me now are going to the Falkland Islands, so they've got to get put on a ferry. So they, I got to drive them to a port, which is military, a, a military base. Uh, they forklift the uh, bags off, and then sooner or later it's going on a ferry to the Falklands. So that's cool. I'm glad I'm going here actually, because like I said, I went yesterday, and I may have lost my paperwork. I don't know where it is. They definitely signed it. I definitely walked. Well, I had it in my pocket when I was walking up to my truck. So either it fell out of my pocket when I got the keys out uh, or it fell on the floor somewhere in the truck and when I got back out again it sort of come out with it, I don't know. Either way, I've lost the paperwork, the guys here know about it, I've, um, so I'm hoping I can get it re-signed. That's the plan. Um, so, yes, we're on our way to Marchwood. No idea what I'm doing after, but uh, it's Wednesday today so I, I am due to go back home. Hopefully they've got to run up that way, sort of, sort of area, so I can get on home. But we'll soon see. But yeah, we'll just get loaded now, and um, hopefully we can get out of here soon and uh, crack on with the deck. Right, we're going to go left here. And I do believe that we are going to pass Southampton Football Club Stadium. Oh yeah, there it is, I can see it already. What's it called? St Mary's, isn't it? Or something? St Mary's Stadium, Southampton. I'm not the biggest football fan or supporter. I like football. But as far as teams go, I mean, the only real thing I support is England. And that's only if they win. <laughs> so right now we are still nine and a half miles away from where we need to be. 26 minutes still remaining. What have we got on? I've got 32 or 34 bags of ballast. And as I mentioned earlier, that's all going to the Falkland Islands. Um, obviously, I mentioned earlier that I, I, I lost my paperwork. I managed to get it signed yet for yesterday, but um, somehow I lost it. Luckily, they've reprinted me off another copy, so all I've got to do is get them to sign that. Tell them to throw away the other one, and then hopefully that's it, all done. But yeah, there's St Mary's Stadium, the Northern Stand. Is it Northern or Northam? Northam Stand. Couldn't quite read that. Do do do. I'm assuming that this is the back player's entrance because it's an industrial area, industrial area back here, so I assume it's the back. And I would have thought the nicer end was at the front, I don't know, no idea. The sinks. Used to work for them, tarmac. Back when I was a tipper driver, class two. Went straight on to class two work, working for them. I worked for another person, another company, contracted to Tarmac. But um, after that, I got my class one and done this. I always get asked, one of the most popular questions I get asked is uh, how do you get a job? Like, do you go on agency or do you just go around asking for jobs? And I'm not, I'm not an expert because I've been fortunate in, enough in the past 
where jobs have been handed to me on a plate. I haven't had to go out and grovel. And I don't mean for that to be big headed. It's just the way I haven't actually had to go and find a job. Jobs have sort of come to me in a weird way. I was very lucky enough to go straight on to tipper work when I got my class two license. Uh, and then the company I work for now, delivered there by the way, doing this, the company I work for now operate out of the same yard that I worked in. So they approached me. They said, we're looking for a class one driver. They knew my contract was up because um, the company I worked for lost their contract. So there was no job for me in three months time. They gave me plenty of notice. And um, the boss I work for now approached me and asked me if I wanted a job. So I haven't ever had to grovel to try and find a job. They've always come to me. But that being said, my advice would be to uh, just go out there, don't give up. I don't think, I don't think many people would necessarily want to see a CV. I think it's that sort of industry where CVs don't really matter as much, it's all sort of word of mouth. And you get a long way by knowing someone, I think. That's how I've got both my jobs. So, um, I mean, if you go online and agencies and stuff like that, then yeah, they're gonna want a CV. But I think if you just go up to someone go up to a company and say you're looking for a job, tell them what you've done, and they're more likely to say, yeah, you're hired, you, can you start Monday? Both both companies I've worked for uh, haven't seen a CV of mine, put it that way. Now this is gonna be quite a tight turn. Heading to the docks. Yeah, so I, I haven't had to provide a CV. So they don't, they ain't got a clue what I did before being a high HCV driver. Obviously, a lot of you guys know, because I've spoken about it before, I worked in sales. I was a vision specialist, worked my way up to becoming a team leader. That hotel looks quite posh. Uh, and then just quit, I didn't want to work there anymore, so I got my HCV license. Very posh hotel that was, Grand Caf. I've never been, uh, well, I've, I've come through here once before, but I've never really been here, so I don't really know the roads or, or anything like that, so I do apologise if I don't appear to be talking much. I've said it before, i say it again. I get a few comments saying you quite like seeing me drive, just the driving aspect of it, so that's what I'm doing. Um, I went to the Isle of Wight with my girlfriend and kids few weeks back and I think that is down here somewhere, Red Funnel Ferries, which is why this place looks kind of familiar, but it's literally just the once I've, I ever come down here. Yeah, no, that's not it. It's a big ferry though, Jesus. Oh dear, 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 dear. I've noticed just now actually, while going over the bridge, you don't look really straight, I've noticed just going over one of the bridges, uh, there's like a load of boats in the water which are obviously you know, I, don't, I was going to say deceased, they're not dead, but they're derelict, like they're not being used quite obviously and they're quite rotten. Is that something that just happens? Do people just leave their ships when they don't want to use them anymore? Or is, or is it just part of the scenery? I don't, I don't fully understand why they're there, like do the council not want to clear it up? Is that a ship? Jesus, that's bigger than a building! Oh, there's Red Funnel as well. That ship is massive. I think that's the ship I can see from Wollstone coming down the hill. That is a massive ship. Got to be careful what I'm saying here. Ship, not the other word. That's massive. You can fit my lorry on like the top deck and there'd still be like loads of room. There's Red Funnel Ferries, that's the ferry I went on to get to Isle of Wight. I have flashed them out if you can go. That looks like someone I know then. 
I thought that was someone I recognised. I was like, hang on, is that you? No, it's not. I don't know him. But yeah, for a split second, I thought I knew him. I thought he was my dad's mate. That boat is massive. Is it a ship? Or is it a boat or ship? It's going to be a ship, isn't it? Associated British ports. Just watching my corners, in my mirrors. IKEA. Oh, talking of IKEA, my girlfriend wants to go to IKEA over the weekend, I think, to get some sort of box, some cabinet with boxes in to put kids' toys in because she's a childminder. I can still see that ship. <laughs> I'm fascinated by the ship. So yeah, we've got to go to Ikea at some point. The closest Ikea to us, even though we live in Swindon, is uh, Redden. So we'll be going to Redden, I think, at some point over the weekend. Carnival UK. I'm enjoying just having a look round. It's a Ferris wheel over there. Obviously, I say I work out of Southampton, but I don't really I work out of Warston, which is part of Southampton. This is Southampton. I don't really get to come through it. Normally I go round it, I go on the motorway and go round it, but I've decided today to go through it. In the hope it's a little bit quicker. Because time is not on my side. I'm definitely not going to be finishing very early today, put it that way. Let's have a quick think about time, so... Be there at 11, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4... Yeah, I'm not going to be back until 5, 6, easy, tonight. Not ideal. 30 miles an hour speed limit, I'm assuming. That's me sat now telling me there's a speed camera up ahead. Yeah, I definitely want to come to Ikea. Not necessarily this one, but Redden from the girlfriend. She's been on about it for ages. Absolutely ages. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll see you when we're closer to Marchwood. Right, we are three minutes away, just around the corner. Less than a mile. I'm not allowed to film inside, unfortunately. Uh, well, it just says no unauthorised photography, is what it says. And technically, what I'm doing is not photography, it's videography. So, I mean. <laughs> Can I, can't I, do I mean? It's a bit of a loophole right there. Just said no photography, no videography, which is what I'm doing. So, it's a bit of a grey area. More than likely not, I'm not allowed. So I imagine what I'll do is I'll record myself up until the gate, and maybe just as I'm creeping in. But yeah, I won't be able to record while I'm actually in there, unfortunately won't be able to do that. <sighs> Just, it's starting to really kick on me now, like, how late I'm going to be back tonight. <laughs> That's Cliff. He's obviously just done one. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be back until about six, seven. Started at five o'clock this morning. So it's going to be a long day, and then I start again tomorrow morning at four o'clock, so it's probably going to be a nine hour uh, rest before I start again. All right, here we go, it's just up here on the right hand side, there's already a lorry look trying to get in. has been told to fuck off. I'm sorry, I should be swearing.
Give way to the trains. It's on this very rare occasion that I think the train would win. Not me. Yeah, it's supposed to park back there, but um, nowhere to park. So I've got to park here, walk all the way back, and then get the ticket. Get the ticket signed. Gonna straighten up a little bit. Oh, do you know what? That'll do. Right, let's go get this sorted. Oh, be right back. Right, so we just finished, which is good timing because the uh, heavens have opened. Let's uh, wag my coat up there. Because I've got the double XL cab. These are higher up than normal cabs. Could barely reach them. Right. Um, I'm going to need my ID. And the pass. Seatbelt. Right, let's rock and roll. All clear on the left. Come on, everyone, in your cab. I don't really care, like, I just want to go. Come on. Cheers, mate. Finished. Yeah, all done. Cheers. Care if you're in the military, mate. Let's go. Right. As you can see, I'm in a bit of a rush. <laughs> I think he thought because he was in the military, he. Uh, well, I mean, he had right away. I, was, I needed to use his space of road, but because he was in the military, he didn't want to uh, let me out. So I barge my way out instead. Got things to do, places to be. Oh, he recognised me. He put his hand up at me. Um, right, so we're on our way back now to Southampton. ETA, uh, well I say Southampton, Walston. ETA to Walston is half past 12. So we are pushing it for time because I'm going to be there probably an hour waiting to be loaded at least. So it's going to be half past one. It's about an hour and a half drive away to Reading, where I need to be. So that's going to be three o'clock, four o'clock tip, hopefully, as long as it takes an hour. Uh, and then an hour, just over an hour drive back. So we're looking about getting in the yard after five o'clock. So I do want to uh, get a little bit of a move on safely and legally. but I want to go and see my kids tonight. Sorry if that's so wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately I couldn't film much in there because obviously military base and whatnot. So I only filmed me entering and exiting. I didn't actually film where I was getting loaded or tipped. Um, right down the bottom, I didn't show the, you know, the ships that were there and the process of signing in and all that. But my God, is it a ball ache? Like, I was there for a good 40 minutes, um, just trying to get signed in. 
obviously I got my ID on me and everything, but there was just so many other drivers trying to get in as well, and they weren't working fast. It really annoys me because at the end of the day, we're trying to, as you know, as as lorry drivers, we're trying to deliver them their stuff. We got other places to be, but they really could not care less. You can tell in their attitude, they're military base, and you think they'd be, you know, polite, but they just don't care. They go at their own slow pace, they think they're higher than you, you can tell that they do. And apologies for any of my viewers who are military base, I'm not slagging you all off, it's just some of them, especially the ones there, today, yesterday was alright actually, but today, the blokes that were dealing with me, just heads stuck up their asses, that's where they were. So I eventually got signed in. And then he goes, yeah, uh, what you do is you go down there. I said, is it the same place I was tipping yesterday? They said, yeah. I was like, all right, cheers, thanks. What went away. And when I actually got down to the bottom where the where the, uh, the shipyard is, where, where they're tipping all the bags, I was waiting for a good 20 minutes before anybody even come up to me. So I phoned the uh, company I'm delivering for up. I said, uh, I've been here 20 minutes. No one's even approached me yet. I said, I've been, I've been down here for 20 minutes, but I've been on site for over an hour already. So he said, uh, phone someone and see, see if they uh, get a move on. And then, what do you know, five minutes later, forklifts come down and they start tipping me. They told me that no one said that I was there, so maybe uh, maybe they could tell I was getting a little bit annoyed with having to wait. And maybe because I said, yeah, I know it is, cheers mate. They decided, oh, fuck you then, I'm not going to tell you where to go. I'm not going to tell people where you are. I don't know. Either way, we're out of there now. Might have to go there again tomorrow. I think there's more going tomorrow. I just don't know whether it's me or not delivering it. Never mind. We're out there now. This this has actually been my second run. I haven't mentioned yet today, but on this vlog, but I did do one delivery this morning. So uh, I I didn't start vlogging at the beginning of the day, and therefore I do apologise. But you've seen. Uh, one delivery kind of and hopefully you're going to see the next um, I've mentioned before I've got a device um, that will turn <laughs> it sounds really simple but basically if I do a time-lapse video as I often do um, it looks really cool because as you're doing a time-lapse video the platform that the GoPro is on will also slowly turn so it actually looks like you're doing like a pan in time-lapse which looks really good so i'm hoping i can uh do that later <coughs> and in fact while i've st stopped at a red light i'm going to put my other gopro on charge and the device is uh is this so basically it just sits on there you choose how long you want it to go around you can you can hear it ticking which is a bit annoying when it finishes tells you but yeah it basically spins all the way around and it's got feet as well for it to go on so uh, happy days you now as far as I'm aware I was allowed to touch my GoPro and I was allowed to touch the accessory while stopped at a red light because it's not a device that's connected to the internet these devices that are connected to the internet that you can't touch but um but yeah never mind so yes I'm uh, gonna leave you here and um, Hopefully, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Right, so the situation is... What are you doing? Just parked up. Situation is this. We are on our way to Reading. Um, take my hat off. We're on our way to Reading. The problem is, I would have liked to have left Southampton way before two o'clock because it takes a good hour and a half, two hours to get there. Uh, it's now half past two so <laughs> like I said it takes an hour and a half to get there at least so that puts it at four o'clock most companies don't take deliveries after four o'clock so I'm in a bit of a situation where they've said if they don't think I'm gonna make it go home they is in days aggregate they said if they think I'm gonna make it go home and deliver it in the morning but try try and deliver it so that's what I'm going to try and do see if I can make up any time but if I get held up anywhere and it puts it after four o'clock I don't think I'm going to make it so 
I'm trying to get there. Traffic lights don't help. I'm trying to get there. I'm just hoping there's no traffic. If there's traffic, then I'm screwed. But I'm not screwed. It just means I won't be able to deliver it tonight. I'll have to do it tomorrow morning. But we'll see. We're going to try and deliver it. Done two loads today. So this, this is the third load. So I'm going to try and get it done today. Even if it means I've got to work late. So, wish me luck. Right. I am in a little bit of a situation whereby I've managed to make a phone call uh, to the company I'm delivering to and I've managed to inquire as to what time they can uh, tip me and they've informed me that I have to be there by four o'clock. If I'm not there by four o'clock they won't tip me. However, they said, if I do get there after four o'clock I'm more than welcome to stay the night <laughs> and act as security as they put it. The problem is I'm going home tonight so that would be a great offer if it was like Tuesday night or Monday night but uh, I'm going home tonight because I need to refill up with fuel and add blue and all sorts so I need to be there by four o'clock the problem is uh, the current ETA is ten past four so I'm going to be ten minutes late and they said they will not tip me after four o'clock so I'm in a bit of a situation where, whereby I need to be in the middle lane if I'm going to Reading or to Winners anyway where I'm going I'm not going to make it I'm looking at sat nav now and it, there's there's traffic up ahead there's roadworks there's severe roadworks there's a red symbol like speed cameras as well but that don't really matter so unfortunately unfortunately I've got to go in it's quarter past three now I've got to be there in 45 minutes, and it's saying I'm going to be an hour, just under an hour. So, that's annoying. Ten minutes away. The trouble is, I don't want to get all the way there, hoping they tip me, even though I'm just ten minutes late, for them to tell me, no, sorry, we did tell you, you can't get tipped. And then I, then I go home from there, that's just a waste of fuel. So what else can I do? Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go in. Back to the yard, start tomorrow, and then deliver it tomorrow morning. Unfortunately. So yes, vlog isn't ending here though. Uh, I'll cut until tomorrow. You'll see me in a sec. It'll be the next day. We're delivering to Reddit. It'll be dark, more than likely. So, uh, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning one, and good morning all. It is the next day. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the vlog, we didn't make it there in time. So, um, yeah, we've had to park up in the yard, fill it with fuel. I'm just doing my uh, day check. 372, 372. Okay, that's that one done. Yeah, just done the daily checks, just filling in the paperwork now before I drive off. Mileage down where we're at now and the time that we got into work this morning. Um, today is like probably the latest I've ever started. Six o'clock. I mean, I've started at six o'clock before, but this is the latest I've started up here, at home, six o'clock. So that's cool. Monday, I've done half three to four o'clock. Uh, that's half three in the morning. Tuesday, I've done six o'clock till quarter past five. Yesterday, I did half five till half four, and then today, obviously, started at six o'clock. So I've done 12 and a half hours, 13 hours, 15 minutes, 10 hours and 50 minutes yesterday. Who knows what today will be. It's bloody cold though, I know that. It's 10 degrees outside according to the lorry. The seat is freezing so I've got the, uh, the heater on. And uh, that's it, we're good to go. Good to rock and roll, so let's put the seatbelt on.
we're good to go. Right, obviously, I can't, I can't drive with this light on, so I, um, I got to turn it off, and obviously you can't see me like that. I don't think you'll be able to see me very well with my light light on. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. So, um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to leave you here, and uh, you'll see me when we are in Reading, which I'm assuming it should be light. Hello, it's now light out. We are just approaching uh, where we're about to be. We'll be there in like less than three minutes. And um, yeah, not the motorway is nowhere near as quiet as it is first thing in the morning. When I'm on that motorway, sort of four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, it's a lot quieter. Around this time, you know, quarter past seven, 20 past seven, it's uh, approaching busyness. Now, what lane do I need to be in? I'm assuming I need to be over here. Yes. All three of these lanes go right. I've got a vehicle on my left and a vehicle on my right, so it looks like I'm in this lane. I was going to try and budge over to the left-hand side lane, but I had vehicles over side of me. Now, this is going to be a bit dodgy. Need to try and get over to the left lane. There we go. I was indicating left and the car wanted to barge past me, but I was going to cut someone up in the middle lane, so I wanted to get over. That was the car that tried barging past me. Now, the thing is, I do need to go left here, but then I do need to go right. This is the problem. When you go to places you've not really been to before, you don't know what lane to get into. It is a green light. Let's go, go, go. Now I need to get over, I believe. Or do I? Go around here. That's the garden centre we're going to, so we need to go around this roundabout. That left lane was left and straight on. I need to go right, so it must be this lane. Anyone who knows me and watches me on my Facebook page uh, will know that the place, well you might not know, but the place I'm delivering to is the place that I got stuck at. I decided, stupidly, to drive on grass. And uh, when you're loaded, it doesn't work out to be the best idea. <laughs> So yeah, I did get stuck last time. Well, not last time I come here, the first time I come here. Uh, and then I've come here once before, once after that. Uh, and now I'm here now, so this is my third time here. It's quite a tight entrance in, I've got to... Uh, well, it's not tight, it's just it's off of the dual carriageway, so I need to sort of take up two lanes on the dual carriageway to get in. Green lights. Jesus, like every bloody traffic light is uh, red. Let me through. Let me through. Oh. I yawned once Ugh. and then I can't stop. That's where we're delivering to, you probably see it now. Let's go. Right, 
Let's take up this bit of lane a sec. In we go. Wyville Garden Centre. Winner. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy. Yeah, that's where I got stuck on that grass there. Doesn't look like you can see where I was. Anyway, I've got to stop here, walk down there, make sure I can actually get in, and if I can get in, then uh, I drive on down. So, I'm going to go and have a look to see if I can actually get down there. Right, we made an acquaintance, we just had to wait for that lorry there to go out, and it's just gone out, so now we're going in. I've also asked permission to set up a GoPro on the outside. And they have granted me permission. They said, yeah, that's fine. Ooh. So hopefully, in a second, you're gonna see a time-lapse video of me getting unloaded, but it's also gonna move. No idea what it's gonna look like, whether it's gonna be any good. But we'll soon see. Let's get the lorry in here first. bumpy road how fast am I going um, about three miles an hour according to my dash we're at two right now right let's get on over here Gonna set the GoPro up on the left hand side somewhere. Lovely jubbly, right, so. I'm gonna head out, set up the GoPro, and I'll see you in a sec. Right, so we've just finished tipping. Hopefully we've got some cracking footage as well. Um, they were very kind enough to, uh, to let me put a GoPro out on the side. Uh, but not only that, he was kind enough to let me put a GoPro on the forklift as well. So um, that's wicked. So I'm just putting in the, uh, the old twat nav where we're going, which is back to Southampton from Redden. Uh, and then I also need to let them know that I'm leaving, so I just need to send a quick text before I drive off. Leaving now, ETA. Saying 10.31, but I say 10.40 just to Just so if I do get caught in traffic, it's fine. And if I make up time, it's even better, isn't it? Right, so. Let's get out of here. So to get out of here, we've got to reverse back. Uh, and turn around to drive out. 
Might have been a bit silly of me to have a seatbelt on already then. The banner, no cars. We shall say bye. It's got to mind that pallet there on my left. Let's go. So we're rocking and rolling. It's nine o'clock now, so uh, hopefully the traffic's died out a little bit. Hopefully we can get out of this turning, which is about to come up onto the road. I think the garden centre is open now as well, so I've got to be wary of customers. That's very tight. Yeah, that's why I got stuck on that grass there. So we shan't be going on that. <laughs> Most definitely not. Yeah, there's a car, uh, a parking, a parking space just here. And there was a car parked in it the other day and he absolutely crapped himself when I come along. You can get round them. I wouldn't want it to be fully loaded car park though, definitely. Definitely not. Right, well, I've got to try and get out of here now. I think this is going to be a bit of a nightmare. Because you want to turn right. It doesn't say that you can't turn right. But right is where we want to go. on the right. It's all clear on the left. And I didn't block anybody. Right, we're off. We are on the road. Everything's okay. Let's go. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Apologies for not being able to get this drop done yesterday. <laughs> but then again, that doesn't matter too much to you, I suppose. You've still got to see it. Let's get around this corner. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Until next time, drive safe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. This video is sponsored by Trailer Training UK, operating across the south delivering HGV class 1 and 2 courses as well as weekly CPC courses. They also do car and trailer courses and many more. I have heard nothing but good things about these guys, check out their online presence, they got a 91.7% first time pass rate and if you quote Luke see you get a 5% discount on top of the 5% price fee they already have. Therefore, you're 100% guaranteed the best price. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below.